What's up, everyone? Say 11 2K here, and I'm here with my match reaction. Look, that's an important result, a very, very important result. There's lots to sort of get into and dissect and talk about, but 2 0 against Villarreal away from home, it means we're not playing in the Europa League. No Thursday night football for us. That was the most important thing. Look, there was plenty of talk about the lineup going into things. Of course, we're still trying to figure out who our manager is going to be. Uh, you know, Carrick, it was always going to be interesting to see what Carrick would do differently to Oli, considering that, you know, they obviously have been working together for so long. Uh, certain players watching out for their performances. There, there was a lot. There was a lot. And I think there was a lot to be critical of. There was a lot to maybe actually be a bit happy about. But most importantly, the result was exactly what we needed. 2-0. Look, going into that first half, it, it was weird. It, you know, it felt like something I'd seen before, which is uh, uh, ironic, I guess. I think a lot of people were quite frustrated um, to, 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 to see what had happened in the first half where we weren't really in the game. We were still struggling in possession to build up from the back and to progress the ball through the middle, third of the pitch, and to try to create chances. It was really, really bad in that sense, in possession. Um, but I don't think enough people were given enough credit uh, to what we were doing out of possession. I know they had a couple of chances, but when you actually compare that first half to other first halves we've had uh, in the past couple of weeks in some of our recent games, it was much better. We didn't give up enough chances. Um, we, we didn't give them, sorry, too many chances. We very much were much more compact. We were much better as a unit in defense. And I know a lot of people might not want to hear that, right? I know a lot of people might be going, wait, 11, chill, chill, chill. I will say this. I do not think Carrick will, regardless of what Carrick does, I don't think he'll get the job. I don't think he should get the job. And that's not his role right now. Um, a lot of people were being very critical of the, the way we were playing and, you know, stylistic things and all these kind of things. And I think people are missing the point. Carrot, that's not Carrot's job right now. Carrot's job right now is simply to get us results in whatever way he can uh, to ensure that we are in a stable position once the manager comes in. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I think getting that result today definitely is a big tick. It is a big well done. Pat on the back. Well done, Kara, because, you know, not having Champions League football would have been huge. But it, it was very good to see that in, out of possession in that first half, we were much better than what we have been of late. It wasn't amazing, don't get me wrong, right? But it was much better, that I will say. And I want to see more of that moving forward. We did a great job of sort of slowing Villarreal down. Um, you know, they they came out and they did ex what you expect them to do. They dominated the ball. They looked to try and exploit that right-hand side of ours, or that, their right-hand side, our left-hand side. You know, Tellers in that first half was struggling. You know, you, a lot of people, I think, are quite high on Tellers, especially because of, you know, Luke Shaw's poor performances. I don't, I don't know how many more runouts Tellers is going to get because they, they, they really did look to target him. I made a tweet on Twitter. Where else would I make a tweet? But I made a tweet where... You know, I, I I got the screenshot of Football Manager where you can select focus, play down the right, because that's what Villarreal were doing. Emery definitely had told them to do that. And and it, it was a big parallel to what they did in that previous game against them with the low, where they very much were focusing the play down the left against the low. And they did the same thing against Tellers. And it was somewhat effective. That was, you know, sort of the primary area where they were creating chances from. But I think we did well. David De Gea doing what David De Gea does well and, and being one of the best shot stoppers in the world, if not the best shot stopper in the world, he he makes these saves that really can keep you in games, right? Really, really can keep you in games. They had two or so good chances that, you know, another goalkeeper in the goal and you never know, we could have been one or two nil down, but De Gea doing what De Gea does. Uh, and like I said, out of possession, we were just a lot more solid. They, as much as they did have a couple chances, like I said, in comparison to the other games, much, much better. Now, don't get me wrong, in possession, it was still poor. It was still poor, still very sluggish, still very boring. And it, it, it very much told me almost everything I needed to know about the mentality of Carrick and Oli and, and, and all those coaches because Carrick came out with a different sort of attacking lineup, right? He's playing Martial, Ronaldo, Sancho, and Donny as the more attacking of the midfielders. You know, to start off with, he was playing Martial off the left, no, he was playing Martial up front and Ronaldo was playing out on the left. And it looked a bit different in terms of where people were on the pitch, even out of possession. You know, he had Ronaldo up top, 
alongside uh, uh, Martial and Fred was coming out to hold the left midfield spot in the 4-4-2 shape. Like, it, it was different in that sense in terms of the, the sort of ideas in terms of what you're going to do in attack. And I think that, that doesn't surprise me. When we have the attackers we have, it doesn't surprise me that, you know, the coaches have maybe different ideas about what to do in attack, right? You know, clearly, you know, those are the players that Carrick sees as probably, right, you know, the, the best options when it comes to trying to exploit space and, and have a competent sort of creation phase. It was the fact that he didn't have any new ideas or any different sort of approach to the other aspects of the game. That is very telling to me, right? Because that was always our big problem, you know, when it came with Oli, where we, we couldn't build up play in that first half. Progressing the ball through the middle third of the pitch, we, we, we just really struggled to do that. We couldn't do that effectively. And and it's always concerning. It is always concerning when you have players that are that expensive um, and who are of that quality, of that ilk, who can't seem to move the ball forward. Um McTominay and Wambasaka in particular were two that were very questionable in that aspect where you go, you know, you start having those thoughts, especially now that Oli's actually gone, you start having them thoughts where the next manager, he might not, he might not be too fond of those guys, right? Um, and 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 even even with some of the other ones, right, where Maguire sometimes, you know, he had the ball and he was a bit sort of too sideways and not really looking to progress the ball through the pitch. Like there were a couple of times where you saw looking, and you go, this is not good, regardless of or, or who it is as the manager right now. Like this, this is really bad. And the first half was kind of slow and it just sort of played out that way, right? Pretty just wasn't interesting, pretty boring. A lot of people on Twitter saying they were falling asleep and whatnot. Second half now come out and, and it's similar, very similar, no subs or anything made, but you started to see what was going on where by the 60th minute or so, Villarreal were tired. They had been very aggressive. They had, you know, pressed us basically all game long. They were really sort of dominating in possession. And after 60 minutes or so, they were gassed. You could just see it. You know, the intensity levels weren't there. They, they couldn't really do anything. And so uh, Carrick decides to sub on Marcus Rashford and Bruno Fernandes and it was the best thing he had done. Um, it, it was it was excellently executed in terms of the game plan and the approach to the match. It was it was brilliant what he did because you bring on Bruno and you get Bruno to come and drop a bit deeper to help with the ball progression. So we we're actually able to build up the ball and progress it through the middle third of the pitch and actually retain possession. You have Rashford who was able to stretch the pitch and really look to try and find openings and get space in behind. You have Jaden Sancho who was brilliant for the most... Daniel Sancho was our best player for a lot of that game. A lot of that game, he was our best player. Really, really impressed me. Looks so much more comfortable off the right-hand side. Looks to have gotten his confidence. And of course, he scores the goal at the end and it was a brilliant finish. Fred, look, Fred gets a lot of stick. And I always tell people, I get Fred maybe hasn't been great so far this season or whatever, but there's a player there. He's not always been like this while he's been with us. And he's going through a bad run of form he can't be like this forever. And and he showed in this game that when he switched on and when he's giving, given the right role and the right task, he can do that incredibly well. People will always, people who maybe are more understanding of Fred as a player will always go, look at Fred for Brazil. And people go, oh yeah, it's Brazil, it's easier. Yes, that is true. But it's not actually about the quality. It's about what he's actually been asked to do in that Brazilian team, right? In that Brazilian team, he's asked to sit behind Neymar and just sweep up, just break up the play right behind Neymar. And he does that so, so well. He did that for us today. And that led to Ronaldo's goal. Ronaldo as well, you know, he can he can be invisible the whole game, but he will show up and be there right when you need him. And that's what he did for us as well when he got his goal. But yeah, I was so happy for Jaden, man. That's all. That's all I'm sort of thinking about, man. Just being happy for Jaden to get that first goal. He needed it. We needed it. We get the three points. Look, I'm I, I'm not gonna sit here and, and psychoanalyze everything about everybody's performance and who did bad, who did good. Because once again, like I said at the start, I don't think that's too important right now. Carrick's job is to steady the. Sh it's funny because Oli was brought in to steady the ship, but right now. Carrick's job is literally just to steady the ship. With this result, he's taken a step towards doing that. Hopefully, we can get a manager before this weekend. But if not, again, I, I, I don't care what approach Carrick, Carrick takes in our, the next matches that he has to be in charge of. As long as, you know, he's doing it for the result and the players believe in it and we get that result, 
Let me know what you thought of the game. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. It's been 112K. You can catch me on any social media at 112K. Peace.